In this video, we're going to see how to create a safe system using resources in Godot. Uh, a safe system that will allow you to do this, to open your save in the inspector and to edit any of the properties you have in there. This is the one we use in OpenRPG at the moment, and I'm going to run you through the code. Note that for a save system, there is no one way to make it. This is one of the ways to do so. Uh, there's another one we covered with Jason in the Good course, and you will have to adapt the code to uh, what you need to save in your own game, right? But this should help you uh, learn to create your own system and a flexible one. So this save system is going to rely on a game saver script that we have in OpenRPG. And you can find the link to the repository in the video description. This game saver script and node has two methods, one called save and one called load. So it's responsible for writing the file to the disk and loading the file from the disk. Then it's the individual nodes, individual objects in the game, like for example, the characters in the, the RPG that are going to be responsible for feeding the data uh, we need to save from them and loading them back into themselves. But let us first look at how save and load work here and we'll jump to uh, the elements that get saved as we run through the code. So first, uh, to save and load the game into a resource, we have a special resource called save game. I'm going to open the file. You can see that it's a very simple one. It just has two variables. The first one is the game version. You use that for file versioning. It's very important. Say you release your game in early access or after release, you have a bug with your save system or something like that, you need to change the data. You will use the game version for backwards compatibility. You can check that the save came from an older version of the game and update the save data or load it accordingly. So this game version, we will get it from the project settings. So if I go to project, project settings, and to config, I've added a property here called version. So you can add properties using the bar at the top. When you go into a given category, make sure to look at the path. So for example, application and config, uh, the path is going to be application slash config. If I expand the window here, if we can see it, you can see the path to any of the properties by hovering it. A pop-up will show you what uh, this is, the category slash subcategory slash the name of the property in lowercase. So for application and config, it's application slash config. Then you can give your property a name and a type. I've used string in here and click add to edit. So I've already done so in the project, as you can see. And so we can access that property. We can get it and set it from the code using that path, application slash config slash version. This is exactly what we do in Game Saver. So we create a new save game that has this game version and a data dictionary. And the first thing we do is we get the game version from project settings. Project settings is a singleton. You can access it anywhere in your code, right? And then we are going to feed data into this data dictionary. So it's going to hold everything that we save in the game. But the entries in the dictionary, it's the nodes that we want to save in our game that are going to feed, that are going to enter inside of that. We have a group in the game called save that various nodes are assigned to. And for every node in this group, we're going to call the nodes save function and we pass in our save game resource here. So let me show you an example of that. Um, if I go to the party in the game and I click on one of the party members, in this case, Godet, but it's the same with Roby. If I go to the node tab and groups, I've added them to the save group. So anything you would like to save, you just click on it and you add it to the save group in the node tab. For now, we only have the party members. Then these nodes, if I go to their script and I go down to the bottom of the script, they have a method called save, another one called load. And this method is going to feed data into the data dictionary. So we have save game, which is our save game resource. 
and we access its data field, then we create a unique key for each of the nodes that we want to save so that we know how to save and load the node exactly where we saved and loaded it in the resource. And we pass the data that we want to save or uh, we get the data that we want to load. Now about that key, you have to generate a unique key that will really be unique for each of the node that you want to save. So there are a few ways to do that. You could use a get path, for example, on your node, because the uh, node path should be unique. The problem is if you change where your node is in the scene tree, which is likely to happen as you develop the game, uh, you will have to convert the path to the new save file format. Uh, so this is a bit dangerous. Instead, if I go look at my save key variable, I generate it at the start of the game. I have a prefix for the type of class that I'm going to save. So I use the class name here, plus the name. The idea is that these types of nodes, like party member, I use them at the same level in the tree. So for example, each party member is under the party node here. Godot will make sure that two nodes at the same level can't have the same name. They will have to be unique. If I try to rename my Godet Ruby, Godot would rename it to Ruby2. So my name here will be unique for each element in the list. And with the prefix, I kind of make sure that I'm not going to step on my own toes and that the idea should be unique. Nothing else in the game should overwrite it. So I'm going to close the scripts and now back to Game Saver where we continue in our save method. So the, the last part of the save method is all about writing the file to the disk. We create a directory object, which allows us to check if the di directory we want to save to exists or not. This path to the directory is stored in a save folder variable. In this case, it's debug slash save as we are building the project in pre-production. If the directory does not exist, we call make directory recursive on that directory object. And it's going to take care of creating all the subdirectories that we need to save the file. Because if the directory doesn't exist and you try to save a file to that directory, it will not work, you will get an error. Then we calculate the path to the file, the save game that we want to save. So we use our save folder path, uh, which is a string, and strings have a plus file method that allow you to safely concatenate file paths. So if you are missing a slash, it's going to add the slash for you. But if you have a, a slash at the end of save folder, it's not going to add it. So it's a bit like um, os.path.join in Python. And I use the save name template. So let me go back to the top of the script. Save name template is save underscore three digits that we need to replace dot tres, which is the extension for resources. I replace the three digits with the ID and the ID is an integer that we pass to the save method. Now we can use resource saver, a singleton to save the resource to the disk. And this is the same class that Godot will use to save all the resources you create through the inspector. So um, the textures, the shaders, whatever, it uses the same tool. You can call the save method on that, which takes the path to the file that you want to save. So this is the full path with the folders and the file name and the resource that you want to save. So the save game that we populated with all the data we want to save here. If the file uh, saves, it's going to return the value zero. So uh, this is an error value in Godot, and you have a constants in GDScript to check the error type. The constant OK corresponds to the value zero. So if you get zero, the file got saved, no problem. But if the value returned from resource saver.save is not OK, it means that you got an error. Then you can check for different errors if you'd like and print different things. Or you could use an assert or something like that. In our case, we're just printing to the console. Next up is the load method. Same thing, it takes the ID of the save that we want to load and it does things the other way around. We first calculate the file path that we want to uh, get. So same thing, use the save folder plus file and we feed the ID into the save name template. 
Then we create a file object, not a directory one, to check if the file that we want to load exists. Uh, instead of using a check and printing to the console, here you could use an assert and assert that the file exists. It's going to return true or false in that case. So you could just do that and if file, the file does not exist, it will uh, give you an error, it would crash the game, quote unquote. Then we load our resource based on the file path. So this is going to create a save game resource like we have here, except that as this is a resource, Godot can load it by itself. It just knows how to load it. We store that in a variable. Then we go back through all the nodes that are in the save group and we call their load method, passing in the save game resource. And the nodes are going to load the data they need on their own. And that is it. Now, to save and load the game, you have to use some bit of interface. And we don't have a full save interface at the moment, but we have our debug interface here. So I can show you how this thing works because that's the same principle you'll use to create a, a save game UI in your game. It has a spin box to set the ID of the save game that we want to save or load, a save button, a load button. The two buttons are connected through the editor to the debug interface node and its script. We have two methods in there, on save button pressed and on load button pressed. We call save and load on the game saver node, passing it the spin box's value, which is our save ID, the one that we want to save or load. And the only extra thing that we have here is an initialize method so that a parent node in the game can feed the game saver node or script to that bit of interface. We had the game saver first under the game scene, but we can do better than that. We can inline it in the interface because the node just provides two methods, so we don't have to pass it around. I'm going to delete the node and remove the line of code that initializes the debug interface from the game script. And then we can go into the debug interface scene, which is also going to open its script and remove that part where we try to use the initialize method to grab the game saver. Instead, we can just place the game saver node inside of the debug interface scene and use an onReady variable to get that game saver node and we'll get the same functionality. The last thing I want to talk about is a bug that we've seen in Godot 3.1 Alpha 4 I'm using right now, which is that the resource, if you save it here into the res folder, will not always get saved properly. It will work if you save to the user path. So I'm going to open Game Saver again. The save folder is in the project's resource folder so that we can edit it from the editor. But uh, Godot doesn't seem to like it too, too much. So sometimes once you save, that resource, it will override the values and reset them, right? It will reset them to the, the default resource, which can be a bit of an issue here. So if you change that path to user here, which is where you want to save your user data, no problem, it works as expected. Now, Nicolas mentioned another issue with that approach using resources. Yes, we can edit it in the inspector theoretically, but uh, I'm going to change the path back to resource and uh, going to create a save game here by clicking the save button. So I've unhidden the debug interface. Now we should have the file right there. If we try to edit that file in the text editor, so I'm going to use Emacs for that. I'm gonna go to Godot, debug, save, save zero. You can see here that our resource has external dependencies. If you were to ever move this combat battle stats character stats resource, the save game as well, this will not get refactored automatically by Godot. So you would have to go edit these lines in the save file to convert it to the new version, which does not necessarily happen if you are working with JSON, the method we covered in the Godot course, because it's not just data, it's data with functionality that we are storing in our save game here. We are storing the references that's one of the limitations of this approach using resources. Thanks to Nicholas for pointing that out. That is it for our save game tutorial, which was brought to you by our patrons on Patreon. So big thanks to them 
for this vote. Uh, sorry if my voice sounded a little funny, I'm sick at the time of recording, but hopefully the tutorial did not suffer too much from that. That said, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, be sure to subscribe, and that said, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.